Good morning, everybody. We are ready to continue on in our story of Farmer Boy. Remember when we left Almanzo, he and um, Pierre and Luis were having some fun with Star and Bright, his calves, his oxen calves, and he wanted them to pull the sled. He let them out of the farmyard, and as he let them out of the farmyard, they ran, they took off, and the boys tumbled into the snow, and they had to get them out of the snow. And Almanzo quietly went and put everything up and cleaned it up and put it away. And his father asked him, you have some trouble this afternoon, son. And Almanzo said, no, I just found out that I have to break Star and Bright to drive when I ride. And so he did that. But he did it in the barnyard. We are now ready to continue on with chapter 10. If you're following along in your book, it is page 109. And the title of this chapter is The Turn of the Year. The Turn of the Year. The days were growing longer, but the cold was more intense. Father said when the days began to lengthen, the cold begins to shorten. At last, the snow softened a little on the south and the west slopes. At noon, the icicles dripped. Sap was rising in the trees, and it was time to make sugar. In the cold mornings just before sunrise, Almanzo and father set out to the maple grove. Father had a big wooden yoke on his shoulders, and Almanzo had a little yoke. From the ends of the yokes hung strips of moosewood bark with large iron hooks on them, and a big wooden bucket swung from each hook. This is what it looks like. They only have one bucket on this one, but there is typically a bucket on each side and each of those buckets so that it's balanced on your neck as you wear it. In every maple tree, Father had bored a small hole and fitted a little wooden spout into it. Sweet maple sap was dripping from the spouts into small pails. Going from tree to tree, Almanzo emptied the sap into his big buckets. The weight hung from his shoulders, but he steadied the buckets with his hands to keep them from swinging. When they were full, he went to the great cauldron and emptied them into it. The huge cauldron hung from a pole set between the two trees. Father kept a bonfire blazing under it to boil the sap. Almanzo loved trudging through the frozen wild woods. He walked on snow that had never been walked on before, and only his own tracks followed behind him. Busily, he emptied the little pails into buckets, and whenever he was thirsty, he drank some of the thin, sweet, icy cold sap. He liked to go back to the roaring fire. He poked it and saw sparks fly. He warmed his face and his hands in the scorching heat and smelled the sap boiling. Then he went into the woods again. At noon, all the sap was boiling in the cauldron. Father opened the lunch pail and Almanzo sat on the log beside him. They ate and they talked. Their feet were stretched out to the fire and a pile of logs was at their backs. All around them were snow and ice and wild woods, but they were snug and cozy. After they had eaten, Father stayed by the fire to watch the sap, but Almanzo hunted wintergreen berries. Under the snow on the slopes hung the bright red berries were ripe among their thick green leaves. Elmanzo took off his mittens and he pawed away the snow with his bare hands. He found the red clusters and he filled his mouth full. The cold berries crunched between his teeth, gushing out their aromatic juice. Nothing else was ever so good as winter green berries dug out of the snow. Elmanzo's clothes were covered with snow. His fingers were stiff and red with cold, but he never left the south slope until he had pawed it all over. When the sun was low behind the maple trunks, father threw snow on the fire and it died in sizzles and steam. Then father dipped the hot syrup into the buckets. He and Almanzo set their shoulders under their yokes again and carried the buckets home. They poured the syrup into mother's big brass kettle on the cook stove. Then Elmanzo began the chores while father fetched the rest of the syrup from the woods. After supper, the syrup was ready to sugar off. Mother ladled it into six quart milk pans and left it to cool. In the morning, every pan held a big cake of solid maple sugar. Mother dumped out the gold, round golden brown cakes and stored them on the top pantry shelves. 
Day after day, the sap was running, and every morning, Almanzo met with father to gather and boil it. Every night, mother sugared it off. They made all of the sugar they could use next year. Then the last boiling of syrup was not sugared off. It was stored in jugs down in the cellar, and that was this year's syrup. When Alice came home from school, she smelled Almanzo, and she cried out, Oh, you've been eating wintergreen berries. She thought it wasn't fair that she had to go to school while Almanzo gathered up sap and ate wintergreen berries. She said, boys have all the fun. She made Almanzo promise that he wouldn't touch the south slopes along the Trout River beyond the sheep pasture. So on Saturdays, they went together to paw over those slopes. When Almanzo found a red cluster, he yelled. And when Alice found one, she squealed. And sometimes they divided and sometimes they didn't. But they went on their hands and their knees all over those south slopes, and they ate wintergreen berries all afternoon. Elmanzo brought home a pail full of the thick green leaves, and Alice crammed them into a big bottle. Mother filled the bottle with whiskey and set it away. This was her wintergreen flavoring for cakes and cookies. Every day, the snow was melting a little. The cedars and the spruces took, shook it off, and it fell in blobs from the bare branches of oaks and maples and beeches. All along the walls of the barn and house, the snow was pitted with fresh water falling from the icicles, and finally the icicles themselves fell crashing. The earth showed in wet, dark patches here and there. The patches spread. Only the trodden patches were still white, and a little snow remained on the north side of the buildings and wood piles. Then the winter term of school ended, and spring had come. One morning, Father drove to Malone. Before noon, he came hurrying home and shouted the news from the buggy. The New York potato buyers were in town. Royal ran to help hitch the team to the wagon. Alice and Almanzo ran to get bushel baskets from the woodshed. They rolled them bumpity-bump down the cellar stairs and began filling them with potatoes just as fast as they could. They filled two baskets before Father drove the wagon to the kitchen porch. Then the race began. Father and Royal hurried the baskets upstairs and dumped them into the wagon, and Elmanzo and Alice hurried to fill more baskets faster than they were carried away. Elmanzo tried to fill more baskets than Alice, but he couldn't. She worked so fast that she was turning back to the bin while her hoop scoops were still whirling the other way. When she pushed back her curls, her hand left smudges on her cheeks. Elmanzo laughed at her dirty face, and she laughed at him. Look at yourself in the glass. You're dirtier than I be. They kept their baskets full. Father and Royal never had to wait. When a wagon was full, Father drove away in a hurry. It was mid-afternoon before he came back, but Royal and Almanzo and Alice filled the wagon again while he ate some cold dinner, and he hauled away another load. That night, Alice helped Royal and Almanzo do the chores. Father was not there for supper. He did not come before bedtime. Royal sat up to wait for him. Late in the night, Almanzo heard the wagon, and Royal went out to help Father curry and brush the tired horses who had done 20 miles of hauling that day. The next morning and the next, they all began loading by candlelight, and Father was gone with the first load before sunrise. On the third day, the potato train left for New York City, but all of Father's potatoes were on it. 500 bushels at a dollar a bushel he said to mother at supper. I told you when potatoes were cheap last fall that they'd be high in the spring. That was $500 in the bank. They were all proud of father who raised good potatoes and knew so well when to store them and when to sell them. That's pretty good, mother said, beaming, and they all felt happy. But later mother said, well, now that that's off our hands, we'll start house cleaning tomorrow, bright and early. Elmanzo hated house cleaning. He had to pull up all the tar carpet tacks all around the edges of miles of carpet. Then the carpets were hung on clotheslines outdoors and had to beat them with a long stick. When he was little, he had run under the carpets playing that they were tents. But now he was nine years old and he had to beat those carpets without stopping till no more dust would come out of them. Everything in the house was moved. Everything was scrubbed and scoured and polished. All of the curtains were down, all the feather beds were outdoors airing, all of the blankets and the quilts were washed. From dawn until dark, Elmanzo was running, pumping water, fetching wood, spreading clean straw on the scrubbed floors, and then helping to stretch the carpets over it, and then tacking all those edges down again. 
days and days he spent in the cellar. He helped Royal empty the vegetable bins. They sorted out every spoiled apple and carrot and turnip, and they put back the good ones into the few bins that Mother had scrubbed. They took down the other bins, and they stored them in the woodshed. Then they carried out crocks and jars and jugs till the cellar was almost empty. Then Mother scrubbed the walls and the floor. Royal poured water into pails of lime, and Almanzo stirred the lime till it stopped boiling with, and was whitewash. Then they whitewashed the whole cellar. That was fun. Mercy on us, Mother said when they came upstairs. Did you get as much whitewash on the cellar as you got on yourselves? The whole cellar was fresh and clean and snow white when it dried. Mother moved her milk pans down to the scrub shelves. The butter tubs were scoured white with sand and dried in the sun, and Almanzo set them in a row on the clean cellar floor to be filled with the summer's butter. Outdoors, the lilacs and the snowball bushes were in bloom. Violets and buttercups were blossoming in the green pastures. Birds were building their nests, and it was time to work in the fields. What do you think that this quote means? When the days begin to lengthen, the cold begins to shorten. What do you think Father means by that? Yes, he means as the days get longer, which means that spring is approaching, the cold gets, it gets warmer, so the cold begins to shorten. That's what he means by that. All righty. How are maple sugar and maple syrup, how do they get maple sugar and maple syrup? Exactly, they do. They get the maple syrup straight from the trees. It comes from the sap of the trees, and then they boil it down. Father has a kettle burning, burning, burning. Well, the kettle's not burning, but the fire's burning under the kettle, and they keep pouring the sap in there, and then they scoop the syrup off of the sap. And then they take it home to the mother, and mother cooks it down into sugar. Some of it is sugar, and then some of it she leaves as maple syrup. What does Almanzo love about being in the frozen wild woods? What is his favorite thing? Yes, he gets to eat the frozen wintergreen berries, and he likes that. Who comes to buy the potatoes? Potato buyers from New York, that's right. And how many bushels do they sell? 500 bushels. How much do they get for each bushel? One dollar. That is exactly right. How do Almanzo and Alice make work of loading the potatoes into the baskets more fun? Well, they try to beat each other. It's a competition. They're trying to get more potatoes in their baskets than the other one. What are some of the spring cleaning chores that the Wilders do? Yep, they take up all their carpets. They do indeed do that. They take them outside. They beat them until all of the, they beat them with a stick, hit them with a stick until all of the dust is out of the carpet. They scrub everything from the floor to the ceiling, whoops, from the floor to the ceiling with water and lye and they get it nice and sparkly clean. They also clean out the, the cellar where they've been storing their vegetables and their butter and all of that stuff that they stored up from last fall and last summer that they had been putting away. They take everything out, they whitewash it, they make it all nice and clean again. And every room in the house has to be cleaned. They take their air, their, not their air, their feather beds, which are, so they're just like mattresses filled with feathers. They take those outside to air out in the sun. Yes, they do all kinds of cleaning chores. They are busy from morning till night in the springtime. It's called spring cleaning. All right, we're going to take a few notes today. So go ahead and get out your interactive notebook. As always, write your name, the date. Today's date is 3 8 21. And the lesson is chapter 10. All right, the, that's interesting. We only have vocabulary. Huh. Okay.
the first thing we have is a vocabulary word, and the word is cauldron. Cauldron. We say cauldron, but we think to spell call, cal, drawn. Cal drawn, cauldron. Large kettle used for boiling. Say it. Large kettle used for boiling. Say it. A large kettle used for boiling. Say it as you're writing it down. A large kettle used for boiling. I'm going to show you a picture of a cauldron. When I think of a cauldron, I always think of those pictures that you see of witches standing around a fire and they've got that big cauldron and they're stirring it with a big long stick. That's what I think of when I think of cauldrons. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the quote that we're going to do, and we're going to write it in cursive. All right. This is the quote. When the days begin to lengthen, the cold begins to strengthen. Is that what it said in our book? I think I read that wrong. When the days begin to lengthen, the cold begins to strengthen. Say it. When the days begin to lengthen, the cold begins to strengthen. Say it. When the days begin to lengthen, the cold begins to strengthen. Say it as you're writing it down. In cursive, when, oh, I forgot my quotation marks, when, and remember, nothing attaches to an uppercase W, when the days began, to lengthen, and lengthen is length, length, we're using GTH, length, length N, and then we're going to put a comma there because that's an introductory, no, it's not an introductory prepositional phrase, it is an introductory clause. When the days begin to lengthen, the cold begins to strengthen. The cold begins to strengthen. And I just wrote my N in the wrong way, the way that I learned to write it, so sorry about that. Okay, that's all that we have for Chapter 10. Very short notes today. All right, well, that's what we got. We'll be back tomorrow with Chapter 11, and you guys have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.